All right, welcome back to the shop. So I did a video on disassembling this CAT 140M transmission, and then I kind of I showed what to look for inside. We found the, the bad clutch pack. Um, I, I ordered all the parts. I finally have all the parts. Uh, they weren't too hard to get them all. I actually got them all in decent time. It only took like three or four days, plus the weekend. So about a week actually to get all the parts. But um, so now I'm going to do a, a video on putting it back together. So this morning I went ahead and put this shaft back together and put it back in. Uh, I talked about in the other video how the, the service manual tells you to remove this, get the, you know, use polar, pull this bearing off and gear off so that you can get this out. Um, I showed in the other video how I just hooked the crane on here and lifted this up and just kind of cocked this over and it came out without a problem. So this morning I reassembled this and I, it weighs 135 pounds, that's what the book says, so I didn't bother to put the crane on it. Um, I just laid the bearing back in there at a little bit of an angle. I got a heel bar under the gear down here and just jiggled it a little bit and it just walked right back into place. And then I uh, torqued this uh, seal manifold back down. I put new seals under it. The seals were really flat actually, which I'll just show you. Um, here's the seals that came out of it. See how they're really flat? Uh, the new seals are, you know, round, they're O-rings. So all three of those manifolds that I had to remove to do this, um, I am changing all those seals on it. Uh, these seals look really good, so I'm just going to grease them up with some really tacky grease before I put it back together so that they'll stay stuck in. Um, one thing I hate about these kind of seals, on final assembly, you'll, you'll uh, like on this, I'll be putting the cover back on, putting this cover back on, and you have to walk it down on there real carefully, and you don't know if you pinch one of these. The only way to find out you pinched one of these is when it's in the machine. This thing's like two, three days of labor to put it back in the machine. Start it up and everything works fine and you don't find the seal material in the screens. There's been so many times since assembling stuff, you put you assemble it, then you pull it back off just to double check, make sure that everything went together good. Um, but you just never know. I kind of hate these. So one, one trick to do too is, you know, a little while before putting, the, putting it together, you flex them together like this and you put like a rubber band on them or, or something, you know, to hold them so that they're kind of stuck this way. Use a real tacky grease, just pack this cavity full of a real tacky grease, uh, pop them back in, and they'll stay stuck in as good as they can. Uh, they do have a pretty decent bevel in there so that it'll slide over and captivate these. But I mean, this one here, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I got 12 of these things that can be an issue when I put it back together. Plus the steel one. I've seen steel seal rings break too on assembly. So anyways, now I'm gonna go ahead and assemble these other shafts. Well, this other shaft, both sides of it, there's two sides to it. I'm gonna assemble this side, flip it over, assemble the other side, and then this shaft and that shaft, I have to pick up together and set in with the crane. These I kind of do, because that shaft there is probably 200, over 200 pounds, like 210 pounds, I think. And this one here is gonna be 150 plus, and trying to get them lined up together, that's gonna be hard. So I'm gonna use the crane to set those in, they'll just set in together. And then, um, then after that, I just have to clean up the, the surface on both sides. Um, of the housing really well uh, to get the sealant off there make sure this will seal it down on the bottoms of the holes dig that out put a new coat of uh and it stays pliable um so you just put a decent little coat of it around the flange all the way around you have to clean it really good with like uh, i use starting fluid is what i use you could use a solvent or a brake cleaner or whatever um and then we put a coat around that and then we'll set this pick this housing up and we'll set it down on top of there i'm going to set up the time lapse camera and i'm going to go ahead and put this together and i'll stop with this camera and um, talk about key things if, if there's anything to talk about as I go together. All right, so in the time lapse, you'll be able to see uh, when I put these new, new discs and plates in here, um, I soaked them with oil. Uh, that's not the oil that's in there. I just use that bottle because it's got that little lid or you know the spout But you uh, you need to coat both sides of the discs really liberally with oil before you put it together You don't want to put them in there dry because uh, You know when it first gets to work at those discs you don't want them dry in there Old like old used discs the ones that have already been in the trans they're already saturated with oil They're soaked so I don't bother to put oil on those but always do it to brand new ones All right, so I just, you know, assembled it all together with the wave spring in there, pushed the uh, 
like they call this a hub so push the hub down put the internal the locks inside there the retainers and then they have these other retainers that go on here as well and if you see that the in the lower retainers one with the taper on them the ones that touch up against the spline they'll have marks from the spline so you know you know which way they go they get they're like flush here with the top of this hub and this one here does stick up above it uh, but it's locked in there all the way around you just have to make sure it's locked in and then what's going to happen is this lock here has that tang on there and it's going to get go right over that and that tang is going to go in between here so when you put that on you want to put it to where this end is almost touching or it is touching and leave a gap on one end because that's going to sit in there just like that and then and then this uh, thrust washer is going to go up on top of that so you'll feel that this is actually a little bit above that retainer right now and that's going to keep it locked in there this will go on top of here and then and then this hub's going to go on top Okay, so I just slid everything back into place. You know, when I take these apart, I flip-flop everything and lay them down so I know which way they go on. And I don't know if it's my ADHD or a little bit of dyslexia or what, but it's so while I get something backwards in my head. I know all this is good because I could see the witness marks on these from what touches where. Um, I did do all these correctly, but when I got to the bearing, I, I stopped and wiped the bearing down and I got screwed up. And there's something I, I usually do if I don't know which way a bearing goes. I put the part numbers out so you can see them. I assume that's right. But there's a couple things here, ways you could tell which way this came off. First off, there's a bevel on this side. There's not a bevel on this side. And so I'm assuming the bevel's gonna go down on the shaft. Okay, and then one other thing when I put this one together. So the book says to heat these up, um, you know, warm them up and then slide them on. The other one, I just used my dead blow. Just got my dead blow hammer. And I was able to tap it on. It, didn't, it wasn't real hard to tap it on. I wasn't beating on it to deform it or anything like that. I just, it just set it on. It sank it down on where it belongs. All right, so I've got this section all together. I was able to just uh, tap that bearing on. I had to use a spacer to tap that other bearing on all the way. So I flipped it over, put it all together, uh, got the bearing on in place, and I was cleaning up these manifolds so that um, you know they'd be ready to go. I took the old seals off, just replacing all the seals on these. Uh, my next step will be to lower uh, these two shafts in, um, and then the manifolds go on after they get lowered in. Um, that way I don't have to worry about the link brackets damaging those um, seal manifolds. So those are pretty critical. So that's a little fun thing that just ha I noticed. So I had all the seals on the ground over here. I had all the parts. And I went to get the seals and there's only two of these left. I counted all the seals. I had enough seals. And um, it turns out that the new shop dog, Scrappy Doo, walked off with one of the seals. Um, last week in the video I... Uh, noticed when I was editing it that he thought it would be a good idea to lick up some transmission fluid off the floor uh, It didn't seem to hurt him didn't have any problems. His poop was really really black the next day So I don't know if that was it But uh, so he took one of my seals. So I've been walking around looking for it. I can't find it I looked on sysweb our parts store and it's gonna be two days to get that seal from the warehouse So thank you scrappy do uh, for extending this rebuild another two days so I am gonna dig through all my seals. Um, I have a lot of seals that are, you know, extra ones for uh, transmissions I've done. And also I have a lot of seals in my service truck. I'm gonna dig through there and see if I can find one, but I don't think I'm gonna find the right one because um, that part number does not look familiar like any, you know, any part seals I've been ordering. Because, you know, you do enough of these things, you, those numbers kind of stick in your head a little bit and uh, you'd see some familiarity. But, so I've been walking around the yard, I found some other seals and stuff laying around out in the, dirt out here but I can't find that one so I don't know if he ate it but I'm gonna go ahead and uh, look a little more and if I can't find one well then I'll finish videoing this in two days so anyways um, in case anybody hasn't met him yet this is Scrappy Doo he's my new shop dog uh, he's a mini schnauzer and he was a rescue out of Tijuana he had they found him he had mange over half his body and uh, he'd got hit by a car so his back legs got messed up a little bit 
So when he stands there, he's got a little bit of a bounce to him in the back end. His back end kind of bounces up and down usually. Uh, at least when he's tired, it does. Uh, but he's a super sweet little boy. Um, he's got the wrong foot. He actually got a white foot. Um, but he's a sweet little boy. All right, so I've got that seal ordered one that my dog ate. And um, I called a dealer. Sysweb said two days, but I called, talked to Steve over here at the Quinn, and he said that uh, it should be here tomorrow. So that's good. So what I'm gonna do is I've already laid these back together, hooked up the, the bracket I made. I'm gonna go ahead and lift those up and set those in. So I get those set in. Um, I can put one of these manifolds on and torque it down. I already had a torque and show and everything for it, so I might as well do it. And then uh, I'll get the case cleaned up, get that all ready to go. I'll clean up the screen, and I have the screen housing over there. I can take it apart, clean it up, reseal it. I've got a new seal for the output shaft. I'll put that on. Um, the pump, I'm going to open the pump up just to make sure it's okay. And I've got seals for it, so I'm going to reseal the pump and the manifold for it. And I'll clean up the suction screen for the, uh, I think that's for the uh, fan. For the, this pump is for the radiator fan and that suction tube for it. So I'll clean those up and get this thing all ready to go. In fact, I can get the parking brake stuff double checked. I already went through and looked at it, but I can clean it up, make sure it's ready to go. Can't put it in though, that's last. But I can lift the case up and clean all that up and clean the lower case and all that too. So anyways, I put the dog in the house with the, with the women so he can hang out with mama in there and he can eat her slippers instead of my, my parts. All right, I got my seal, so now I have three seals in there. I can go ahead and uh, clean up the flanges on the both housings and set that upper housing on top, and then uh, get that all sealed up and torqued down. All right, so I've got all these seal manifolds torqued down. I put the new seals in them. I just slathered them in grease and just stuff them in there with the grease. I wipe my hands here. I have a way to hold them in place um, so they're not trying to spring out. So I had them, I kind of stored them for about an hour, just kind of curled up, you know, smaller, so that they'll, they'll take a, you know, like kind of stretch closed. And that way when you put them on, you have a better chance of them not springing open when they're on there. So you can see like they're trying to spring open a little bit. Um, just before I put the cover on, I'll do one more kind of squish on them, you know, to squeeze them into place, just to make sure that they're not sticking out. Um, I've got this surface cleaned up, got the old sealant off, the old sealant out of the holes. I've got new sealant laying on there. Um, this is what seals it. So you don't want it too thick. This is almost probably a little too thick maybe. It's going to squish out obviously, but I don't want it to leak. You know, I'd rather have a little extra than, than a, not enough. Um, you know, it's not like silicone. If you put a lot of silicone on, you get those, like this big long, you know, like tube kind of things that's, that'll stick on here, that'll squish out and then they'll get into the valves and stuff. The stuff here's not like that. It'll stay kind of adhered to here. It stays flexible. Um, so it's not as bad if you do have the extra, you know, uh, sealant squishing out on it and then I've got the upper or the other case here all cleaned up scraped down um, I spray uh, ether on there you know uh, uh, starting fluid on there I wipe it down real good sprayed it down again wiped it down sprayed it again I did it three times to both sides and then um, so here's something I was talking about you know here's where the seals are gonna go in on those seal carriers and they put a really big bevel on here which is nice um, so it's gonna help close that seal in uh, I've noticed this one hole has a little tiny bevel. That's because the shaft here doesn't have a seal. Well, it's got that metal ring on there, but it doesn't have the plastic ones that are going to pop out. So these metal ones actually lock down so they won't pop out. So that's that's why that one's got a smaller bevel. And so then I put a come along on, on that end and a come along on the side 
That way I can adjust this thing all directions and all axes so that it'll line up straight as I'm coming down because I don't want to come down sideways and be you know, messing around with it and then knock a seal out. This is the most crucial part of it is closing this down without knocking those out. So that's why I have that. As I get close, I'm going to check with my tape measure and everything, make sure it's, it's even all the way around as I come down to it. And then I'll be able to just set it right down. Um, got this O-ring in here. I've cleaned it out uh, really well, got it real clean. It's all ready to go. So I'm not sure why I didn't think of this before, but you can pull these covers off to see what's going on down here with the manifolds. And so I could do that to help me line them up and also keep an eye on them. Make sure that nothing, uh, no seals pop out. All right, well that went down surprisingly easy. It lined right up. I was able to watch it through these holes back here and it just set right down. Nothing hung up, nothing snagged. And the case went right down. Dowels lined up. Um, it really helped having two come-alongs and a single chain on here. And then I measured it. It was like five and a half inches even all the way around. When I got to a certain point, I made sure it was that, like, you know, it was the same distance all the way around. And she set right down. Um, so here's those manifolds. You can actually unbolt these manifolds and pull them out from this end as well. The book shows to put them on before you put the case down. So I didn't bother trying to put the case on and then popping these in. Um, I just thought I'd do it this way. Um, hopefully it's the best way to do it. So anyways, I'm gonna put all the bolts in. It's gonna be about 50 bolts in this stupid thing. And I'm gonna torque them to the spec. And then I can put these covers back on and I can Put the parking brakes well yeah put the put the covers on flip it back over put the parking brake in uh the pump the screens and all this other stuff and i should be done with this thing in about an hour All right, so it's Saturday. Um, I finished with this on Friday. I went and got a haircut. Finally got my haircut. And uh, so this morning I took and picked it up, set it up on the, on the pallet, like strapped it down just how they had it when it showed up. Um, I finished mounting a couple of peripheral things on it. I had to put the transmission pump on and the screens. Uh, I think I started that yesterday, but I finished that up and I put the uh, fan pump back on, resealed this stuff. This is the pickup tube. For the, goes to the bottom of the bell housing uh, to circulate the oil because you know, it's got a wet bell housing and she's strapped down she's ready to go um so this actually wasn't that bad of a rebuild when i first took it apart I, it looked pretty daunting inside but it's really not that difficult uh you just figure out you know you know take your shafts out figure out uh you know lay them out and just take them apart and just lay everything out in order and do each shaft and get the parts you need and figure out whatever else you got to do to it put it all back together stack it all back in it wasn't that bad actually um, so hopefully they're going to pick this up on Monday. I'll get it out of here. I can uh, steam clean my plywood, get it cleaned up, ready for the next project. Um, I think the next project is going to be the 735 transmission I have right here. 
I picked up a couple of uh, uh, takeout transmissions and I got a pretty decent price on them, so I'm happy about that. I built that one up already for a spare for my uh, 735 rock trucks. So next time I lose a trans, I can just take that out and swap it out. It'll make it a one or two day uh, project instead of two weeks, you know, while I'm waiting for parts and everything after I take it apart. Um, so anyways, that's it. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, please uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed already. Uh, hit the like button for sure, please. And please comment if it's just a thumbs up or if it's just, you know, if you have questions about it or whatever, go ahead and ask. And um, yeah, it just helps with the algorithms with YouTube so I can get my videos um, out there shared. Otherwise, they're just kind of hidden and people don't see them. But if you guys comment, if you guys hit the thumbs up and subscribe, whatever, um, it'll get out to more people so they can take advantage, benefit from um, seeing how this comes apart, see what, what all is involved. Uh, that way, you know, you own, you know, they own a, one of these motor grader transmissions and they lose the trance, they're not, they, they know what's inside. It won't be that uh, big of a mystery. Instead of sending it to the cat dealer you know, paying $30,000 to have it rebuilt, you know, you can do it yourself if, you know, if you're a decent mechanic, if you know what you're doing with this stuff. Um, anyways, um, thanks for watching and have a good day. Yeah, where's that seal at? Should I follow you around wait for you to poop it out? Huh? Might be quicker than waiting for cat. Yeah. That's probably what he thought it was. He probably thought it was a cat. And you're supposed to eat cats. That's what Scrappy Doo does. And one other thing, the reason why this thing is able to fit so precisely without shimming it, without shimming the shafts, um, right there, it's made in Germany. These guys, it's incredible the work that Germans can do.